Live from the Quadigian capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gd. The news headlines is brought to you compliments. GUT Credit Union. In my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. I'm reaching my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. Since 1983, they've been solving the country, and we like all their finance and giving the people what they want, what they need, what they love. Come and join the family that's here for you all the way. From birth to graduation, your first job to your home and your car through your golden years. The GT Credit Union has been actively supporting mission building through its many sponsorships and programs including financial literacy quiz, pass the torch calypso program, junior cooperatives in secondary schools, CPEA, and the Time CC grants. The Credit Union has helped many people make their dreams come true. Let them help you with yours. You don't have to be a teacher to be a member. So what are you waiting for? GUT Credit Union It's where you belong This is the GBN Television News for Thursday, June 18th, 2020. In the headlines, Ministry of Health declares Grenada COVID-free. Second batch of 88 repatriated citizens expected to land at the NBIA tomorrow. Police search for St. Paul's man missing at sea. Two Vincentian men plead guilty to money laundering charges in Grenada. In the sports news, Craig Brathwaite says he's eager to put advice from West Indies batting great Desmond Haynes to good use to an upcoming test series in England. And in Around the Globe, the Carter Centre welcomes CARICOM's report on Ghana's election recount. Good evening from the Grenada Broadcasting Network. I'm Ken Roy Batiste. We'll be back with the details. Hi, I'm Francis Urias Peters. I'm a good listener, and K105 has always been a great source of education and entertainment. Now, while the station name may have changed over the years, it has always provided valuable information which enabled me as a playwright to document and to celebrate our history, our behavior, and our achievements. K105 is my choice. It's the national station. We begin with news this evening that Grenada is now COVID-free. So says Minister for Health, Nicholas Steele. In a press briefing via Zoom this morning, the minister said the last case of the coronavirus on the island has recovered. We get more in this report. Minister for Health Nicholas Steele declared Grenada COVID-free on Thursday. He also confirmed that no returnee has tested positive for the virus. However, he explained that eight cruise workers who recently returned to the country on the MS Marina have tested positive on the rapid tests but have not tested positive for COVID-19. I didn't say six, it's eight. The, 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 whoever asked the question had said six. It's eight individuals that tested positive on the rapid test. Now, to date, yes, they were immediately tested with for PCR, so that's the more accurate test, uh, and all have been cleared. The reason that we continue the, the, the quarantine and observation of all the individuals that came off the cruise ship and all the individuals that are coming on the flight is that they will be tested again and again during that period. The minister warns that although health officials have not recorded any new cases at this time, there is a possibility that a positive case may surface. Similarly with COVID, we recognize that and that is why there is the quarantine period. That is why there is testing on entry to Grenada and those eight individuals were tested PCR and they, they were cleared, but they're still kept in quarantine and, and will be tested again. So as of today, we can say still, we have zero cases of COVID-19 in Grenada. 
We have people in quarantine that we will continue to test. So there is a possibility that one or two or so, God forbid though, but some of those individuals who are in quarantine may test positive for COVID-19. And we would have to say that we have one case in quarantine. One person tested positive in a prior batch, but has since been cleared of the virus and reunited with family. So far, a total of 234 cruise passengers are safe home in Grenada. All have spent their 14 days in quarantine and released, except the last batch that came in on Monday. The next batch of 36 is expected here around June 30th. Chris Lena John, GBN News. Meanwhile, Tourism Minister Dr. Clarice modest Cohen says the decision to resume commercial travel was done at the CARICOM level. However, she says individual countries will have the last say. The CARICOM heads had met and they had agreed to, um, to collectively determine when it's a good time to open borders. Since then, um, I presume you may know that some of the islands have gone ahead and opened. We did not think we were ready yet, and um, therefore we decided to hold back a bit. So the decision finally rests with every individual, but there was that. Um, I also want to say that we have had discussions with two different offers from airlines to look at um, inter-Caribbean travel, which we think is the best thing to do. It's the safest when you look at the number of cases in our country. Minister Modest Kerwin is encouraging local hoteliers to shift some of their focus to staycation, which caters to local guests. The staycation is going to, it, it has started. A few hotels have used some initiatives. It will take off even more, hopefully, for the next week or two. Um, we believe that that would give persons, workers and so on, opportunity to get acclimatized, get accustomed to treating people in a great way, but differently to what we're used to. And we're still pursuing the regional. Maybe that is the way we are going to go. We're discussing that, as Minister Steele said. And, and we believe it's the best way to go. But everybody may not necessarily follow that kind of policy. All right. So Grenada will resume commercial travel on the 1st of July. The story to report the second batch of 88 repatriated citizens is expected to land at the Maurice Bishop International Airport tomorrow. They are individuals who traveled and were stranded due to COVID-19 and the lockdown measures taken by most countries. Minister for Health Nicholas Steele spoke of protocols that must be adhered to by these individuals on their return. Number one was that individuals receive a PCR test before the flight, at least not more than seven days before the flight, and that test had to be negative uh, for COVID-19. The objective there was to make sure as best as possible that, that individuals were not infected or contagious before boarding that flight. During the flight, everyone is expected to wear masks and maintain distances. There are only 88 persons on that flight. So as best as possible, there will be spacing within the aircraft. But we are aware that that is not an ideal circumstance. When individuals land, they will be asked upon landing to maintain the same lineup as how they sat. So when they come in to the terminal building um, to be tested by us, we will ask them to sit in the same order that they sat in the aircraft. The health minister says this was not achievable for some individuals coming from the United States. However, alternative measures have been put in place. They will all undergo rapid testing at the MBIA. At that point, who tests positive on a rapid test will go to secondary testing right there and then at the airport for PCR test. Uh, depending on the results of that PCR test, they will either be isolated if 
that PCR test is positive, or they will go into the quarantine, uh, mandatory quarantine facility like everyone else if that PCR test is negative. All individuals will do a minimum of four days in the government approved quarantine facility. At the end or during that four day period, every individual will be PCR tested again. All 88 individuals will be PCR tested again. Those who had a PCR test before boarding that was negative, four days after arriving in Grenada, have another PCR test that is negative, will be allowed to complete the rest of their quarantine at home because the rest all right so with official reopening of borders carded for july 1st similar measures will be taken to ensure individual safety the Grenada Coast Guard is in search of a male St. Paul's resident who went out to sea on Wednesday but never returned. The Community Relations Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force confirmed to GBN that the individual whose name is being withheld left the Fort Judy Bay at about 7.30 a.m. on Wednesday to go fishing. Reportedly went along with another fisherman, but they were in separate boats. Reports saw that the missing man was approximately one to two nautical miles outside Point Celine Sandals area. Police say the missing man called someone to report that he was having engine problems. The individual then contacted the Coast Guard. The other individual later returned to base to learn that his friend was missing. Police say the man informed them that they encountered rough waters. He went back in search of his friend, but failed in his attempt. Police say the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard has been informed about the missing man. Two Vincentia nationals jointly charged for the offenses of money laundering and conspiracy to commit money laundering by having in their possession cash amounting to 10,000 euros have pleaded guilty. 35-year-old Lamar Condis and 29-year-old Elvis Harold, both fishermen of Clare Valley, St. Vincent, appeared at the St. George's Magistrates Court on Thursday, June 18th, to answer to the charges. They pleaded guilty and were fined $5,000 each to be paid forthwith. In default, one year at Her Majesty's prisons. Condis and Harrell were nabbed by officers attached to the Northern Division on Sunday, June 14th, following the interception of a blue fishing boat at Diamond Rock. The men and the boat were taken to Harvey Vale, Karakou, where a search was conducted, resulting in the confiscation of approximately 10,000 euros. The money has since been forfeited to the state. You're watching News at 7. Still to come from us, Teachers Union voices concern over students wearing face masks for the duration of classes. We will talk about that. Do stay with us. Grenlick is pleased to advise that all services have been resumed. We invite you to make an appointment with us by email at customer support at grenlick.com. WhatsApp on 473-405-6931 or call 237, select option 3, extension 311. When making an appointment, please provide your customer name, telephone number, service required, and the customer care center you would like to visit. You will be contacted within two business days to confirm your appointment. Together, we can keep each other safe. Together, we will smile again. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. 
It's new, innovative and classy, and it cut above the rest. Your one-stop shop for bathtubs, kitchener, customized doors and windows, and even a new paint job. We also sell quartz and solid surface countertops. At Eminent Hardware, we offer best prices, excellent service, efficiency, and reliability. Visit us at Dusty Highway, Grand Dance St. George, or call telephone number 440-6757. Eminent and hardware from foundation to roof let's build together moms are always special we give them teddies hugs kisses chocolates perfumes and jewelry all the softer things in life but for father's day offers 15% discount of all machines storewide. Come in and choose your favorite machine and instantly get 15% off. Walk in in style and walk out with a smile. This Father's Day, sale starts June 15th and ends June 20th. Europa. We service what we sell. Our superheroes are all among us. They don't wear capes nor have superpowers. In fact, they appear to be quite ordinary. They are the ones who provide us with food. They are our farmers, our grocery store workers, our vendors. They are our fishermen. They are the ones who heal us, our doctors and medical practitioners. They are the ones who protect us, our police officers. They are all the other essential workers who make this period bearable. And how can we forget our teachers, dedicated to educating our children no matter the circumstance? To everyone who is doing their part to make sure the wheel keeps turning, Ariza says, thank you. slash Passpay and press consumer. Select your country and enter your account number. Enter the amount to be paid and an email address. Enter your credit card information. You'll receive a payment confirmation with the transaction details, along with a receipt to your email address. It's fast, safe, and easy. Blow, keeping you connected. Celebrate this Father's Day at Pair 57's Sundays at the Pair Luncheon. Sunday, June 21st, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Enjoy the sounds of Jenny J and friends and musical selections by Select a Beast. Minimum four persons per group, $160 per person. Call or WhatsApp 407 5757 for reservations. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. We're back almost two weeks into the reopening of schools for Form 5 students and one of the major difficulties that teachers and students cannot hear themselves. Oral communication continues to be a challenge and GUT President General Marvin Andal in his correspondence with teachers says wearing a mask poses a major difficulty. Here's more in this report. Over in Barbados, the Ministry of Health has proposed changes to regulations to allow a mask-free classroom once proper social distancing is practiced. 
here at home, President of the Grenada Union of Teachers, Marvin Andal, is proposing face shields instead of face masks come September. We are looking to have an engagement with the ministry shortly um, because just yesterday we had an executive meeting and some of those concerns were raised because some persons, we have persons on the executive who are uh, in secondary schools who are actually teaching from fives and shared with us some of the challenges. And we believe that we need to have an urgent engagement with the Ministry of Education. This, he says, may be needed if the full cohort of students return to the classrooms and the regulations are still in place. Responding to the call for electronic reports from teachers, Mr. Anders says they believe it is unnecessary for teachers who are not tutoring Form 5 students to report to work every day. So the request to go back to school for everyone is something that we want to engage our ministry on and we today will be in contact with them to see how urgently we can have a meeting because we believe that it is unnecessary to have teachers return to school um, insist that they dress formally to go and interface with the chairs and table at the school. Proper sanitation of all schools is another challenge. The duty leader notes is an issue to be addressed with the Ministry of Education. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. Meanwhile, the GUT President General says they are providing a number of avenues for mental support to their members in coping with loss of relatives, among others, during the pandemic. He says as part of Teachers Month of activities, some events as recent as this week targeted wellness and stress management. Just last evening, we had a program put on by the women's arm, very successful, very interesting, a lot of learning took place. Last week, there was a similar program. So the GOT has taken that into consideration, and as part of our Teachers Month activities, we have organized some specific activities geared at dealing with some of the challenges that our members face, some of the issues, and having them addressed by experts. Now... Students, sharpen your skills on natural disasters. This year, NADMA's Radio Quiz will be the new platform for the annual primary school competition usually held around this time of year. The change is due to protocols in place as a result of COVID-19. Public Relations Officer at the National Disaster Management Agency, Austin Crosby, explains that the competition is designed to test students' knowledge on disaster preparedness and awareness done this year is to take it to the airwaves where we're doing a question per day on the different stations and we give our children an opportunity to call in and win a prize but it will the focus remains the same where we have a number of hazards that we would have identified on the different days that you get to the young ones you get to remind them the things the hazards that we are surrounded by and of course what the things that they need to do to always ensure that they are safe so the questions that were used in past quiz is what we're using now um, we can tell you students at home will be quizzed on areas such as climate change, earthquakes, floods, tsunamis, volcanoes, and cyclones. Last year's winner, Woburn Methodist School, which walked away with the winning and challenge trophies, will have to hold on to it until the official competition resumes in 2021. The NADMA Primary School Quiz is now into its 22nd year. Crosby says students can get ready for the radio quiz by accessing information on NADMA's Facebook page. So the primary school radio quiz, the radio version, would have started this morning. Um, in addition to that, we have a number of preparedness programs um, happening. So we're using our different media entities, GBN, um, GIS, and so to ensure that the message get out there. On our Facebook page, you'll see a lot more activity happening there now too. We've we'll changed our cover page reflective of the time in which we live, um, the hurricane season in the midst of Corona, um, also that of sharing our daily tips. Um, Still ahead in News at 7, no need to go into the Inland Revenue Department to pay motor vehicle registration, inspection fee and your driver's license fee. We'll tell you how you can stay at your home and conduct these transactions. Back in a moment.
when you need your prescription filled or you require non-prescribed medication, supplements, or all your personal needs, visit Gittins Healthcare at locations on Wall Street Grand Ans, Victoria Street Grand Ans, and Central Deputy Street Wall. Gittins Healthcare aims to provide an exceptional personalized pharmacy experience. Additionally, children under 5 and adults 55 years and over will enjoy 10% discount on purchases of $20 and over on prescription medication. Stop settling for less. Visit Kittens Healthcare, where your health is our priority. The Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Caribou, and Pretty Martin in the fight against COVID-19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum, and our focus has been on the production of a sanitizing solution to assist in the fight against this dreadful pandemic. We have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our health authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. Do you still have EC1 and 2 cent coins? If you do, then you have until the end of this month, 30th June, to spend them, exchange, or deposit them at your commercial bank. After 30th June, you will not be able to use your 1 and 2 cents as they will no longer be legal tender. Find them, spend them, exchange or deposit them at your commercial bank. Act now and receive value for your 1 and 2 cent coins by 30th June. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center, and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalanced hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753. To find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment, visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic. Detox your way to health. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flu. Now more than ever, Flo is working hard to keep you connected to the things that matter most. Your family, your work, your favorite entertainment. We are also providing Flow Study free of charge so students can stay connected and up to date with their schoolwork. And because your safety is our highest priority, you can manage your account from the safety of your own home through the MyFlow app. We are here for you, keeping you connected. A new portal, pay.gov.gd, has been created by the Inland Revenue Department to facilitate payment of motor vehicle registration, inspection fee, and uh, driver's license fee. The aim is to create improved access to services and reduce the inconvenience of long lines at its cash offices. Details in this report. This new payment option is in keeping with the IRD's new strategic focus of building a more consumer-centric organization by delivering efficient services of, to taxpayers as well as improving taxpayer compliance. The ultimate goal of the, this initiative, especially with the COVID-19 now is in the air, is to reduce as much as, as we possibly can the, the gathering and to have a faster process, you know, than people have to go here, there, everywhere, in other words, to get one thing done. 
you know. So if we, I, I mean, there was so much discussion, even on the port, you know, with all the the vehicles and things that are coming in, you know, just to have one stop shop. So a lot of things are in discussion right now. It's just that the time for it to be um conclu be concluded and a decision is made as to what to what will be really we doing to go forward. That was Sergeant Edwin Abraham, head of the licensing department. In 2020, the Inland Revenue Department was able to implement multiple payment options, including wire and electronic funds transfer via its e-services platform. This most recent platform, pay.gov.gd, is easy to use, reliable and secure, and patrons are encouraged to make full use of this time-saving opportunity. Randy Boyk Cadet, Deputy Controller, responsible for Headquarters, Inland Revenue Division, says the e-service platform was long in the making, but with the onset of COVID-19, this has speed up the process. Persons have already started using the platform. Others are encouraged to follow suit. So this is a big deal for us at Inland Revenue, the fact that we can deliver this online platform that I believe so far has been getting a lot of good reviews. You know, we are constantly looking for ways to improve on that. Um, because our doing business ranking means a lot to us as well. And if persons are saying that it's pressuring them to pay taxes, we don't like that. And as a public servant, we should try our best to deliver best quality service to, to our, our people. So um, I'm humbled by the opportunities that we are given by, by COVID and um, the, the whole energy within the Inland Revenue by all our staff to deliver top quality service to, to citizenry. Persons are required to first get their inspections completed and provide a contact to have their receipts sent to them. The Ministry of Finance continues to implement initiatives to facilitate improved access to its services and reduce the inconvenience of long lines at its cash offices throughout the Tri-Island State. The Inland Revenue Division is working in collaboration with the Royal Grenada Police Force. Chris Lena John, GBN News. Here now is a look at this evening's GBN ISAW compliments Clear Vision Eye Center. A good eye captures all. GBN Eyesore is brought to you by Clear Vision. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We're changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. Tonight's ISO reporter submitted photographs of freshly completed sheds for pedestrians at the Grenville Bus Terminus. The bus terminus was built in 2017, but until now had been an open space. We thank our ISO reporter for that submission. You can send in your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp on 405-3052 and our other social media platforms. At Communo, we are adapting to meet the changing needs of our shareholders and members. Times are changing, and with the changing times comes a whole new way to do business. Our parents may have done their banking a different way. Communal's state-of-the-art online banking and international debit card allows members to do business with great ease. It's like literally having a branch in your very own hands. Need a loan? Apply online from the comfort of your own home anywhere in the world and your request will be dealt with remotely want to transfer between your accounts or another shareholder no wait time for transactions to update voila who needs receipts when you can receive them via e-statements on your mobile device and save the environment not a communal member you can join our family today by applying online at communal we see you working hard to ensure that you save invest and grow communal join us today this will be the best financial decision you have ever made my name is Hollis Mr. Killamap and I endorse this message Tropical shipping is fast and reliable always on time safe and affordable friendly staff here to connect you tropical world 
world wide, you must get you. Shop online and you get it on time. Hustle free to meet your deadline. Consolidate any size, any load with tropical shipping, so we ship everything. I can't wait to ship with tropical. A local agents, George F. Huggins and Company, Grenada Limited. A telephone number 440-8787. Or visit our website at www.tropical.com. Email us at grenadasales at tropical.com. Tropical Shipping. Committed to island life. Papa Ram boy. Hey, hey, good old things. Hey, Daisy. Yeah. Boy in line, boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about that thing. They were there with me every step of the way. Supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as a house took shape, they were there from start to finish and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A++ for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the housing authority of Grenada? You could visit them right down in the Sandino complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016 or check out their website hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks, they go draw your plan, they go talk your material, <laughs> hey man, wait, wait. The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress free construction experience. The Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Caricou, and Pretty Martin in the fight against COVID 19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum, and our focus has been on the production of a sanitizing solution to assist in the fight against this dreadful pandemic. We have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our health authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. Esplanade Mall, something for everyone. Go on a shopping spree today and experience some magic. Keeping an eye on the weather, this is GBN. We've got you covered. All right, weather for Grenada, Caracol, and Petit Martinique, valid for tonight and the following three days. Weather tonight, partly cloudy to cloudy and hazy with a few light to moderate showers. It's a warning, moderate haze, so please be mindful of that. Tonight's minimum temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. Wind east northeasterly to easterly at 8 to 18 miles per hour. Seas moderate, waves 5 to 7 feet in open water. Tides low at 8 p.m., high at 12.01 a.m. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 5.44. The weather on Friday, the 19th day of June. Partly cloudy to cloudy and hazy with light to moderate morning and evening showers. On Saturday, the 20th, partly cloudy and hazy with scattered light to moderate showers and possible isolated thunder showers. And on Sunday, the 21st, partly cloudy with dense haze and light isolated showers. A warning will be in effect 
on that day, of course, Dense Hayes, individuals with respiratory conditions, please be advised. That is the weather. Sports News up next. Good evening, sporting fans. Craig Brafwitz is eager to put advice from West Indies batting great Desmond Haynes to good use during next month's test series in England. Time for the sports news with TV6's James Saunders. Cricket makes a grand entrance and the West Indies opening batsman Craig Braffitt only has called on the experience of fellow Barbadian and Windies legend Desmond Haynes to help him find form ahead of the three-game test series against England. Well, both Braffitt and Haynes have worked together previously on technical components of his game, but more recently the focus has shifted to the mental side. West Indies opener Craig Brathwaite is once again hoping to shine in English conditions. So does he feel that added pressure since Darren Bravo and Shimron Hetmeyer opted out of the tour? Nah, not, not for yeah, extra pressure. I mean, I, I know all the guys here, you know, can't do well. I mean, I, I'm, I'm starting the innings and I'm just going to do my job, you know, as simple as that. Um, you know, confident each each player is here, each batsman. And, you know, I know we have a, a good batting lineup and the guys are ready and ready to go. So, you know, no added pressure, you know, really. Bradweight has been through tough times of late at test level and hopes to rectify that. Regarding his goals during the three-game test series, he just hopes to help the team in the best way possible. Uh, well, as I said, you know, before, um, you know, my, my, I'm just looking to do my job, you know, which is, you know, opening, you know, again, he's showing off in your ball and, and building that foundation for the guys to follow. You know, that's what the other folks, you know, you know, if every innings I could do that, you know, put, you'll put the team in a, in a great position. The 27-year-old, who managed to find some form during the 2019-2020 Regional 40 season, looks up to a former West Indies opener from whom he gets solid advice. You know, I had some words with um, Sir Desmond Haynes, you know, back in Barbados. Um, you know, me and him always had a good relationship. You know, because he was team manager for the Barbados team when I, when I first started. So, you know, he had some chat with him. You know, he's obviously an opener as well. And, you know, it was very beneficial to me. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot, but let's keep it simple. You know, you don't really want to complicate it too much. But yeah, there's my hands. Bradfield scored 468 runs from eight matches during the regional 40 season, averaging 33.42 and hitting three half centuries. Vinod Nawani, TV6 Sport. Well, it's time to pop the bubbly and celebrate as Napoli held the nerve to claim a first major trophy in six seasons. Well, that's after beating Cristiano Ronaldo's Juventus 4-2 in a penalty shootout in the Copa Italia final. Milik scored the winning spot kick after Pablo Dybala missed Juventus' first kick and the teammate Danilo blazed the second over bar. In this penalty shootout. Well, this followed a hard-fought goalless draw over 90 minutes of limited chances played behind closed doors at the Stadio Olimpico. The win gives Napoli boss Gennaro Gattuso his first major trophy as a manager. What a goal from Milik. Alright, let's keep the fanfare going as we head to England where the matches have finally resumed after COVID-19 and it wasn't a great day for Aston Villa who are in danger of being relegated after drawing goalless with Sheffield United. Almost such worries for Pep Guardiola's Manchester City who hammered a 10-man Arsenal 3-0. With the English Premier League having started back, teams had the words Black Lives Matter on their shirts. Hosts Manchester City gave Arsenal a scare on this occasion. City had the better of the exchanges and opened the scoring through Raheem Sterling on the stroke of half-time. Raheem Sterling with his first goal. Arsenal suffered a blow in the second half as David Luiz was red-carded for a foul. It resulted in a penalty which was converted by Kevin De Bruyne in the 51st minute. That made things extremely difficult for the Gunners against the Citizens. And in the 90th, Man City got their third. The initial shot hit the furniture and Phil Foden picked up the pieces. 3-0 it finished to City, who are second on the table.
On your mark to the track we go and it's not good news. As 100 meter world champion Christian Coleman has been provisionally suspended by Athletics Integrity Unit. This comes after the American sprinter missed three drug tests in a 12 month period. Coleman said he was out Christmas shopping when officials arrived at his home for a drug test. Since he was not home, he was considered in violation of the drug testing policy. It was the third infraction with the other two occurring on January 16th and April 26th. Coleman said he was at a nearby mall five minutes away when officials arrived at his home. He also faced disciplinary action due to anti-doping violations in 2019 but was cleared in September. Coleman is considered a favorite to win the gold medal for the 100 meter at the Olympics even after they were postponed due to the coronavirus. It's now time to take a look at what's happening in the world of sport linked to COVID-19. Tonight the focus is on cricket, tennis and football. In cricket, Pakistan Cricket Board Chairman Ishan Mani believes it is not feasible to host the men's T20 World Cup in Australia in 2020 and that the tournament is likely to be deferred by a year. A final decision on the matter is likely in the next three to four weeks. Only on Tuesday, Cricket Australia Chairman Earl Eddings said it would be unrealistic and very difficult for the event to go ahead as planned. In tennis, it's confirmed the US Open will be held without fans from August 31st to September 13th. The Grand Slam will be held at Flushing Meadows despite some players voicing concerns about traveling to New York. But there will be no qualifying and no mixed doubles under plans approved by the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo. And in football, this season's Champions League and Europa League competitions will be completed in August with final eight tournaments in Lisbon, Portugal and in cities across Germany. Competitions were suspended in March because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Vinod Narwani, Team Six Sport. That's it for sport for the team. I'm James Saunders. Catch you later. Around the globe, the Carter Center has become the latest international organization to welcome the report of the CARICOM high-level team who observed the recent election recount in Guyana. We get more from News Source. Well, the Carter Center has become the latest international organization to welcome the report of the CARICOM high-level team, which observed the Guyana elections vote recount. In a statement today, the Atlanta-based Carter Center commended the Guyana Elections Commission on the completion of the recount and said it welcomed the CARICOM statement that despite minor flaws in the process, the recount results are acceptable and provide a basis for the declaration of results. The center said although it is disappointed that it was not allowed to return to Guyana to directly observe the recount, Count, it is encouraged by CARICOM's largely positive report on the recount process. The Carter Center reminded that it had previously stated that while electoral preparations and voting and counting procedures met international standards, the March tabulation process for Region 4 generated results that were deemed by the Carter Center and other international and local observers as not credible. The Carter Center said all Guyanese need to prioritize efforts to strengthen Guyana's democratic institutions and advance constitutional reforms to move beyond the winner-takes-all system. The Carter Center was in Guyana for the 2nd of March elections, but left just after as the country and other countries started a lockdown to fight the coronavirus. When the center attempted to send representatives back for the recount, they were not allowed as the coronavirus lockdown remained in place. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, the three-member CARICOM team of scrutinizers of the just-concluded national vote recount is recommending to the next government to conduct a political audit of the Guyana Elections Commission GCOM and a fresh registration of all voters. A political audit of GCOM, both the Commission 
and its administrative arm is urgently warranted, according to the team who included two election experts from St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Antigua and Barbuda, as well as a political science professor from the University of the West Indies. The team cited the need for an immediate audit because it said it, it said in a very real sense, GCOM betrayed its obligations to behave impartially and independently. Well, the death toll from the coronavirus pandemic reached 80 on Wednesday as Haiti recorded four more deaths over the past 24 hours. It's so we can tell you. The Ministry of Public Health in its daily bulletin gave no details on what part of the country the victims had come from, but said that there were 106 new cases of the virus, bringing the total to 4,547 since the first case was detected on March 19th. It said active cases were now 4,443, an increase of 102 over the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, cases of the coronavirus also continue to rise in the United States as businesses reopen and people flout medical advice and wearing masks and physical distancing. The country has reported more than 117,000 COVID-19 deaths the highest fatality rate in the world by far. Social distancing and mask wearing are being ignored by many Americans with predictable results. More than 20,000 are testing positive per day with large spikes in several states, including Arizona, Texas, Florida, and Oklahoma, where President Donald Trump plans to hold a mass campaign rally on Saturday. Florida now has more than 82,000 cases, a 17% jump in just the last week. They include a group of 16 friends in Jacksonville who took advantage of the state's decision to reopen bars to have a night out. All have since tested positive, and the bar is closed again. I was one of those people that like, ah, come on, it's not that serious, and I got it. More than 3,000 people in Florida have died from the virus. Hospitals are filling up. We know already that social distancing and wearing of masks helps to prevent this disease, and we're not seeing that right now. Weeks of protests over police brutality and systemic racism may have led to more infections. In Massachusetts, the governor ordered new pop-up test sites for demonstrators. In Arizona, cases are surging with record high numbers reported. The state's Republican governor threw open businesses, bars, and other public places in mid-May. In Nevada, the Democratic governor has opted for safety, halting the state's next phase of reopening. Now is not the time to abandon these protective measures. It is a time to double down on them. We can only stay open if we stay safe. Please for caution. Often going unheeded. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera. Still in the U.S., a former Atlanta police officer has been charged with murder for killing the killing of Rashad Brooks in a fast food parking lot last week. Garrett Rolfe has been charged with 11 criminal counts, including felony murder and assault with a deadly weapon. If convicted, he could face the death penalty. The other officer at the scene, who faces charges of aggravated assault, has agreed to testify in the case. That is Around the Globe for now. We'll be back to remind you of the headlines. Mind of the headlines if you're just tuning in to the newscast. Ministry of Health declares Grenada COVID free. Second batch of 88 repatriated citizens expected to land at the Maurice Bishop International Airport tomorrow. Police search for St. Paul's man missing at sea. Two Vincentian men plead guilty in money laundering charges in Grenada. 
in the sports news, Craig Brathwaite says he's eager to put advice from West Indies fashion great Desmond Haynes to good use during upcoming test series in England. And in Around the Globe, the Carter Centre welcomes CARICOM's report on Guyana's election recount. If you missed any part of this newscast, the repeat of it will be broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online, gbn.gd, or on GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other stories. I'm Ken Roy Batiste. That's the news. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. important to know what your road signs and markings means. The zigzag lines means you should not park in the marked area.